A very good evening to you, good afternoon, good morning. But in Accra, Ghana here, it's a good evening. So good evening to you and welcome to the Power Impact Series show. Proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network, where we go into the next generation of young people, and for that matter, of Africans. So you are welcome. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Ozu Ansa. It's always a pleasure having you here on the Power Impact Series show. It's proudly brought to you by the Boss Charger, Dark Web, and also from A. BN News carrying us to give you all that we gave you all these years. Today's promise also to be another wonderful time. Last week was a powerful time. This week, I promise you, we're taking it to another level. Beautiful wisdom nuggets going to be shared here with our beautiful and our wonderful guests in our midst. Today, today's show is going to be some bit more of less like a podcast. Don't worry, because our guest have some challenges where he's joining us from. So we're going to listen. All we need to know is to get to hear the wisdom nuggets that he's going to share with us on the topic for the day. So as we do it always, we're going to take our first commercial break. And right after the commercial break, what I'm going to do is going to introduce to you our guest for today. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Share the link, let others also come and join us to listen to this wonderful wisdom nuggets. That we are for you. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Share the link. And when you come back, get to the chat area. Let me know who is joining me online, where you're joining me from, and then what are your expectations for today's episode. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty with the eye opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity? organizational innovation and global shift a collective of speakers mcs and moderators will shift your perspective meet our speakers for booking and interviews contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com you can also follow us on all social media channels at afsesnet global african season speakers network influencing the next generation of africans Influencing the next generation of Africans. That's what we seek to do, and that's all we're doing here on the Power Impact Series Show. So, straight up to our guests for today. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy hearing from this wonderful guest that we have in our studio. So, our guest today is a CEO and co founder of iSpace Foundation. Our guest is also the chairman of the Ghana Hops Nest Network. Ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time on the Power Impact Series show, it's no other person than Mr. Josiah Kwesi Aysen. Joining us for the first time, let's give him a round of applause as he joins us on the Power Impact Series show. How are you doing, Mr. Josiah? <laughs> I'm doing great, uh, um, Ambassador Benjamin. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, uh, running up the fourth month of the year, so we good. <laughs> <laughs> we're already good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've 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 uh, we've waved through four solid months of 2023, so we're keeping on going. We just Amen. stick into the plan. Yeah, I'm sure it's been good for you too for the past four months or past three months. It's been good for you. How's it been? <laughs> Can't complain. It's been it's been positive. Um, a lot of things that we had to do, uh, re, you know, regarding work and a lot of impacts. So yeah, this four months has been very educational. So can't complain. Yeah, you can complain. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me know where you're joining us from, and then if you get to the chat area, let me know who you are, where you're joining us from, and hey, hey share the link and let others also benefit from what is going to be shared here. So. I just gave a little bit about you. I actually encapsulated it behind some series of quotes. <laughs> so now that you're here, we want you to elaborate on the quotes behind Josiah Aizen. Who is Josiah Aizen? Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Let us know more about you, and then the conversation starts flowing. Okay, so I'm Josiah Aizen, born um, in Ghana, raised in the UK, unfortunately. Um, and um, so schooled in the UK, moved back to Ghana, pretty much worked across um, a lot of the African countries. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, I work with people in the tech and startup space, 
I, for my sins, I support Manchester United, so I'm glad everything went well today. Um, and yeah, I just love the work that I do and currently the chairperson for Ghana Hubs Network, which is the umbrella body for all the hubs in Ghana. Um, so my work is also working with government when it comes to policy for startups and um, helping entrepreneurs raise funds for their businesses. So in a nutshell, that's what I am and this is what I do. Right. That's what he is and that's what he does. So you 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 kind of uh in a tech space, right? Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, so so how the tech space like in Ghana for the past uh, okay, past four months. Let's let's take 2023. How's the space been? Uh, how's it been um, like? That's I mean for the past four months it's been very um energizing. Um a lot of the guys and girls are working on amazing products. Um, and then we also seen um, government through the likes of NEIP trying to support entrepreneurs. Um, we have some of our guys that have raised money so far. So from Pharma Line, um, M Pharma, a couple of other people just raised money recently. We've seen a lot of energy um, movement in the whole fintech space. Um, and I mean, when you look at people doing amazing things, particularly with health, health tech and fintech. See, so in this four months, it's been really, really, um, you know, positive in terms of what the tech industry is happening. And then again, we have a couple of events um, that are going to come up towards the mid part of the year that everything started from January. So we have a digital week that um, we did in January with GIZ and a couple of other people. So, yeah, I mean, it's been very, very busy um, in the four months. I get enthused when I'm hearing a lot of tech stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it because yes, I, I always keep saying that um, technology is now the wheels on which all other industries are running. So, hey, you can run away from it. You, if you're trying to uh, push yourself out of technology, I think you want to be working in the dark. You need to bring yourself up to space no. with what is happening there. Right, so Definitely. what 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 what's, what's the main role or what is the work of um, uh, the hub network? What, what do you do? What is it all about? So, I mean, that's a great question. Um, so the hubs itself, innovation spaces operate differently. Some of them are just co-working spaces. So if you need an office, you need, you know, any, you need to have a meeting and whatever, there's some spaces that you do that. Then you've got the ones that actually offer a conducive environment. And by that, what we mean is these are people that offer office space, but then they offer also training and access right. to funding and all of these other things. So if you find yourself as an entrepreneur or somebody with an idea, you can walk into any of these um, you know, hubs. And right now we have um, over 62 hubs spread across all the various regions in Ghana. Kumase having the most hubs um, and Accra having the most oldest hubs in there. Um, and then we have, um, you know, hubs in Temale, all the way in Wasi. So no matter where you are in the various regions, you're going to have a space. And again, you go to these spaces, they train you, they help you pitch, they help you put your business ideas together, and then they're able to then also raise funds for um, some of the projects that you work on. And again, if you're looking for technical skills, they also help you build on those technical skills as well. So hubs work in different ways. Some of them are just co-working spaces and some of them are actually training and supportive environments in that sense all right so we're getting it now well, that was going to be the follow-up question <laughs> or what really the hubs oh. that and, and then you just you just kind of uh bottle it all so it's not specifically for tech kind of um businesses it's an open um platform or an open space for anyone that is running any business that wants to kind of um, ship it so well so that it becomes more sustainable and, and uh, attractive to the outside world, if I should put it that way. Right. And uh, that's an excellent question and one of the best ways to describe it. See, so it's for all businesses. We just wrap technology around what you do. So we make tech the focal point. So that if you, if, um, even if you're in agriculture, any form of space that you're in, we then wrap technology around you. So like you said, technology is the bedrock of pretty much all industries, right? See, so that's what these innovation hubs do. They teach you how to wrap technology around your idea. So we're even working with 
you know, SMEs, people from the informal sector, helping them incorporate technology into their business. How do they do that? Their um, basic things like using WhatsApp for businesses. We train market women um, how to use WhatsApp for businesses. See, so technology is not always where you're creating something new. It's also about leveraging on what is already in existence and then using it for your business. So that's what most of these um, hubs tend to do anyway. Oh, well, that's brilliant. Yes. Yeah, so, hey, so you out there, if you have any idea, if you have anything you're working on, these are some of the places you need to go in there. Let them help you up. Let them build it up for you. Wrap it around with technology and let us have a larger coverage or larger reach of people for the services or products you are having. Who knows? Somebody sitting somewhere needs your product, but because of the jurisdiction you've been limited to because you're not making use of technology. You can have advantage of this and go there. So, how does one come into the any of your hubs to to pitch their project or to get some kind of uh, upskilling for the project or services they have? In? Um, and once again, it's a great question. So, if you want to find out where most of these hubs are, if you go onto www.ghanahubs.com, sorry, www.ghanahubsnetwork.com you would then find all the hubs across the various regions. So typically Accra, for example, you will find the likes of iSpace, MES, Stronko, um, Mobile Web Ghana, all of these other things. And we pinpoint the locations. So you can just walk in um, and ask to see the hub managers, tell them what your needs are, what it is that you're looking for, what kind of support that um, you're actually in, um, in need of, and then they can sit with you, do a needs assessment, and then from there, they can then say, okay, you need to know how to pitch your business, or you need a co-founder, or you need some technical skills. So, so you can literally just walk in. So please, if you're listening, go to www.ghanahubsnetwork.com, and then you'll be able to see all the various hubs in whatever region that you find yourself in. Just walk into those hubs, and then tell them exactly what it is that you need um, need them to help you with. And it just starts from there. Hey, isn't this beautiful? Wherever you are listening to, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to kickstart whatever you're doing or whatever you're about to start doing. Because listen up, they, you don't need to reinvent the wheels. People have already done what you intend to do. They already gone past where you are. And these are places that you can go and then get those knowledge and get those expertise to move whatever you want to do. So the web, the website you need to get to so that you can find out which hubs is closer to you is, uh, can we go again, uh, Kwesi? That's www.ghanahubsnetwork.com. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ghanahub.network.com. Yeah, um, www.ghanahubsnetwork.com. Right, right, right. So we'll put it in the, in the chat area so that people can pick it up and then we'll... All right, so we've already started the conversation. I love it because we will need this. <laughs> we will need this as we go on. So straight up to our topic for today, entrepreneurship. So he's actually giving us more or less like the subscript which we're going to feed on now <laughs> the hubs have been created already so we're going to start from entrepreneurship um, there are a lot of complaints a lot of people churning in a lot of stuff that yes we finish from the technical institutions we finish from tertiary institutions and then there are no organization ready to absorb us for us to relinquish our skills or what we've been taught or what we've learned from the tertiary institution how can all these things be curtailed or can can be minimized in a country in an economy we find ourselves in how can people kind of redirect all that they've learned all that they've acquired when companies or organizations are not absorbing them um great question and I think before I even attempt to dissect a lot of the, um, that aspect of the question, we have to recognize that just because you've come out of university and you've got your qualification, that is not a birthright to a job. That's something that we really need to uh, manage the expectations on. Um, what are the paths to finding um, jobs? One is internship. A lot of us don't like to go through the route of 
you know, doing internships. Sometimes you can even do it before you finish university. That way that gives you an easier access to employment because you're already familiar um, with the organizations and your work practices and you've gained experience, right? See, so right. if you are fortunate enough to then, you know, not get opportunity before while you were in school or during while you were in school and you um, graduate, one of the first things to do is try internship first, even if it's for three months. You do a three months internship at an organization. You are, when you go there, you excel. There's going to be a job opening. You will get a chance. Now, if you also want to try the route of entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship should never be the solution or the silver bullet to finding jobs. Entrepreneurship itself is about problem solving. See, so in this case, what problems have you identified in your neighborhood, in your community, in the country that you feel you have the skills to solve those problems? Right. See, so it could be, again, um, your fellow students looking for jobs that they can't. But you seem to be a great connector. You seem to be one person that can connect. You seem to want, um, be one person that can put proposals together or put CVs together. You can literally start off a company that is helping your fellow students put their CVs together to get a job. See, so you just have to identify what the needs of your community or immediate customer needs are and then try to create the jobs out of it if that's the route you want to go in but if you want to go to the route of finding a job always try an internship first do a three months internship excel at the space two things that it does for you is whilst you're there and you work very hard if there's a job opening you are able to then automatically get um application and then get an interview because you already work with them so it's easier even if you don't get an opening in that place, there's another organization that might have an opening. Why is this beautiful? It's because now you have experience. So now you can apply outside. So coupled with your qualification and experience, you actually much more employable than before. So I think that's what needs to be um, really addressed. How do you get yourself employable by gaining skills through entrepreneurship? Um, sorry, but through internship. But then if you want to go through the roots of entrepreneurship, then, you know, find a problem and then bring a solution to it. The people will find value in it that will pay you for. People will find value in what you bring in and then they're going to pay you for. I love the first part that we talked about, finding yourself an um, attachment or kind of stuff like that so that you can gain the kind of experience that the companies out there are looking for because sometimes the complaint is that ah, the, we just came from school, you know, and the, the, the advertisement is showing four years, five years of working experience. We don't have that. How are we going to do that? But right. I think you nailed it uh, by letting them find some kind of a uh, um, kind of uh, is it apprenticeship job or kind of <laughs> yes. go in there yeah. and get those right. kind of stuff. Think, yes. Yeah. And that's what they need to do. I mean, even in the first year of your um, university, you can do two, three hours at certain organizations. And then as time goes on, you increase from two hours to three hours to four hours because you're telling them I'm an intern, so I'm working for free. And so you're using that time to build your experience. So in your first year, I think it's level 100, you do three hours a week, fine. You get to level 200, now you're doing 10 hours a week. You get to level 300, now you're doing 15 hours. You get to level 400, now you're doing 20 hours, right? So what you will find is now, you got four years worth of experience. You didn't, you've not finished school, but you got four years worth of experience working in that industry. See, so by the time you finish, it's easy to get a job. So when you see a job that says they need somebody that's got four years, five years, you can apply. Why? Because you've been working in that industry part-time for that long. But so you need to be creative around how to navigate around that particular two year, three year, you know, experience that they ask. And it's about you also giving your time into that sector, into the industry that you want to work in right from level 100. Don't wait to level 400 and then get your qualifications before you, you know, venture into that industry. You could do it at the very, very beginning at level 100. You can start getting your experience from level 100. So by the time you get to level 400, you would have gotten the worth of 
close to four years of working experience and you can stand shoulder tall or shoulder high with anyone that is applying for the same job that you are applying for i think this is a kick or a knockout point for you uh, no, uh, this this brilliant this powerful so hey whoever is online with us whoever is listening to us and you'll be complaining about that this is the time this is what you need to do get to that places and then pick up those internship i mean uh, slots and start working at that. But Kwesi, some would also throw back the question that um, these organizations might be thinking of uh, their competitors. They might think that they are coming in as uh, as uh, undercover people coming into the organization to come and pick information on what they're doing and then go back to their their kind of organization that they have been sent from. How do you? Mm -hmm. How do we? handle that kind of thing because there are a lot of threat coming in there so they feel that this is coming in from their competitors so they don't really open their doors for interns to come in and get this experience we're talking about i mean that's a great question and i always say that um relationships is always give and take right see so if you want me to trust you you have to act with integrity and everything else see, so if you come into my organization as an intern when we have meetings if you're just quiet, taking notes, taking notes, I'll be watching you. I'll be thinking, okay, you don't say anything. You're just taking notes. And so what is the value of this space that you're in, right? See, so in order for you to be able to beat all the um, suspicions, you have to add value to the place that you're in. So you can contribute to ideas that they have. Because if, let's say, we, are, we have a marketing strategy and you are in the room and then you're saying, okay, from a youthful person... For example, being a student, I know my stu uh, my fellow students come online at 3 a.m. because that's when we're more active. These are the kind of content that we like. This is what we react to. These are our role models. So if you speak. So now what you're doing is you add them value to your space. You're telling them very valuable that they would never even have gotten if they don't um, work with you. Right. See, so automatically any suspicions that they have of you as in being a spy would not even be there. Why? Because you you know, giving them information, you give them information for them to win. So that um, that itself, let them know that they can trust you, right? There's no guarantee that what you're saying is going to work, but at least you're contributing. So once you're contributing to the movement of an organization, it's easier. People will trust you. And I think that's what organizations also need to do is um, create a space that allows or enables new people or young people or interns to be able to voice our ideas, right? Feel comfortable to share ideas. They feel involved, they feel listened to, they feel motivated to be part of a team. And that way, you know, it works. And I always, and one advice I would give to anybody that is suspicious of anybody that's in the in organization, since you're suspicious of them anyway, give them a task that you know that you want them to fail at, right? So if they right. fail at it, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You didn't want them to succeed anyway, just to find out if they aspire or not. Right. See, so I don't feel like it's, it's not fair not to trust the person, but without giving them a chance first. So what you do is give them something to do that is not too serious. It's not too important to what it is that you're doing, but it's also it plays a role. You give them something to do just to see and test your loyalty in that sense. So it's a give and take thing, really. Wow, it is a give and take thing. This, this is brilliant submissions by Crazy Asian. This, this is powerful. I mean, hey, if you're joining us, let me know where you're joining us from. If you've not shared the link, share it because this is what we need at this time. A lot of people complaining, yes, we don't have those experience, but Crazy has just given it to us. Sai has just done perfect injustice to that canker that is eating up a lot of young people coming out from school. You don't need to wait till you complete before you start putting in those applications. Uh, you can start in volunteering at some organizations to get that experience that they will be needing you for. Because once you're done and you are going to fight for that position in that organization, they will definitely require some kind of working experience. And by you doing those volunteering works in tension, you would have built up those portfolio of experience and you can stand 
shoulder at all with any other person for that job that you go thank you for joining us if you're joining us now you are on the power impact series show where today we are discussing or talking about entrepreneurship and then helping us do that is josiah kuzi who was taking us to a high level higher altitude from his beginning submissions share the page let us just also join and then we're going to enjoy the whole nuggets that he's sharing with us yo so chrissy thanks so much for the submissions um now what about the young people what about young people entrepreneurs coming up with ideas or they've seen some um problems in solution in society and they want to render some solutions to it but they they have in their mind that we are afraid when we share this idea with these big people and for that matter with this hubs aren't they going to steal those ideas from us because one we don't have the resources we don't have the network we don't have the the money we don't have the the, the things that we will need to shape this thing into a formidable business idea are they not going to into code steal this idea from us and use it um and again you asking brilliant and very you know direct and honest questions and i would assure any young person that is listening here and i'm not trying to dismiss your feelings because it's true it does happen right but never operate from the side of fear. Fear itself is supposed to guide you to do the right thing. See, so now here's the things that you do. If you have an idea, but you don't have the resources, yes, you can, before you even tell people about your idea, copyright them and let them sign an NDA first, right? So non-disclosable agreements that they're not going to talk about what it is that you've discussed with them. You right. can also, find ways to not talk about see so we always say that your value proposition is different from your unique selling point right, right. so you don't right. tell people about your unique selling point what makes you unique so um i always when i talk to them i use this analogy of um god and the devil right the devil right. was there when god was making humans right so he right. saw the process but he did right. not see the very important part when god put life into you so and that is the difference and because they didn't see what um how god put light and um, life into you the devil cannot replicate human beings right, right. See, so you as an right. entrepreneur you need to hide that important part of your idea you can talk about the rest of the idea but the very thing that makes your idea click you hide it you make sure you protect it you go to a lawyer you protect your ip you, you know, every single person that you're going to share your in-depth in ideas with, you sign NDAs with the people. Now, before you fully disclose your idea, the person must have invested in your business. So if you give me the investment, then I will tell you how this business actually works. And this is where we tell the difference between a business model and a business plan. The business plan is what you tell everybody, right? This is what I intend to do. I am going to do it in five years. It will, it will end me this money. This is the market and everything else. That's, that's the business plan. The business model is how your business works. The in and out of how your business works. Every single minute detail of how your business works. How you're going to get customers. What is your value proposition? You know, the channels you're going to use. See, so once you identify all of that, you keep that information to yourself. You do not disclose that to anybody unless they sign an NDA and they've invested in your business. See, so do not be afraid to share ideas, share parts of your ideas, but not all the ideas, right? And that's for me, that's the kind of thing that we like to um, tell new and young entrepreneurs that are up and coming, that they need to protect their ideas, get NDAs, speak to lawyers, get people to sign contracts before you fully disclose anything to them. You need to protect your ideas. Lovely. I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation and I know you are enjoying it too. <laughs> I don't want us to have a, <laughs> a scenario of how you're going to protect your idea because uh, let's take, for instance, um, uh, um, I want to start a restaurant. Yet so, but down here we say you want to start a food joint. So that's, that's basically the food joint. Whatever the case is, you're going to do some local food dishes that you're going to sell out there now how are you going to model such 
a business so that you keep the model to yourself but you can release the business plan of that kind of business you want to run so that i mean we, we can have some kind of uh, uh leverage for those mm -hmm. that are listening and those that are having that kind of ideas that are going to share with you. maybe they don't have access to a lawyer they are thinking we need to pay a huge sums of amount for the lawyer to right. do this drafting and all those things for us so how do we use that scenario to try and create some kind of a uh, confidence for young people that are in that situation trying to get something running for themselves great question so again one um the straight answer would be if i'm talking if let's say i wanted to start up a restaurant so i'm talking to somebody and i tell them yeah i want to set up a restaurant that we do let's say fufu and all of these other things and i also want to deliver and when we deliver we sell our plates at let's say five city people call and then we deliver and then we make money that's where you stop because okay. all i've told you is just a generic version of the business right but right. i haven't told you who my chef is how are we going to cook yeah. the food, the logistics right. companies that we're going to use, the partners that we're going to have. So let's say for partners, for example, I need partnerships in people that will supply me with meat, people that will supply me with vegetables, people that will supply me with employees and all of these things. I haven't told you. So now if right. you don't know that, you will not know how I'm able to keep my product or my, uh, my cost so low and still make money. You don't know that, right? All you know is I want to serve food that has never been served before is going to be delivered and we're going to make this amount of profit that's it that's all so you know the generic version but you don't know the main detail of who my chef is going to be it could be my grandmother who gave me the recipe to, um, 100 years ago that is running to the family you don't know so without me it wouldn't work and that's how you have to be so that's like generally the difference between the two this this powerful this, this is a punch <laughs> i like the punch mm -hmm. lines it, it's it stays with me this is the framework that is it mm -hmm. it's a normal thing you're going to do but the ingredient for doing that is kept is kept in my pocket you don't have to. yeah one of those yeah. i want to think that uh, i want to invest in your business and i'm asking you these questions and you're trying to withhold certain things from me how do i see the fruition of this business when they come in with those questions as entrepreneur <laughs> yeah. how do you stand up this this uh -huh. that's says that's why you as entrepreneur you have to be very bold be bold but don't be rude right be very bold and don't be rude so the question is if the person says well until you give me your secrets i'm not giving you the money that itself is a clue that they're going to they were looking to rip you off anyway right because we always right. say investors invest in people not the idea they invest in people so if they like you they should have invested in you to begin with your idea is just a bonus see so is them telling you that okay tell me more about your business you tell them more about the business but you don't tell them about the main part of the business so until the money hits the bank and me and you are partners I am not telling you what my secret ingredients would be. It's just that simple. So if you cannot take that, that means you really didn't want to invest in me. And anybody that has got good intentions for you or with you will not waste their time you know, trying to convince you. They will just get it straight away and they'll think, you know what, I like this kid because of the fact that they bold to tell me that, yes, invest in me, you will get your money, but you're not going to get the secret ingredients until you invest in me. So when I see your money, I will tell you what the secret is. Simple. So you have to be very bold and demand and know your worth in that sense and then communicate with an investor. They're just people like yourself. They want to make money. See, so they will find ways to make money and you just have to convince them that you are the right person for that. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to put out some points. <laughs> 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 it, it's just coming in it's gushing out like sh <laughs> sh <laughs> all right so viewers or listeners thank you for joining us if you're just joining us you are the power impact series show where today we're talking about entrepreneurship with uh josiah chrissy eason eason who is just giving us some beautiful wisdom nuggets on how as an entrepreneur to be able to sell your business plan and not your business model for investors to come on board or feel attracted to what you're having for them to invest in you so most of these things that you've just mentioned these are some of the things that the 
hubs network does right yes yes see so we we then support the hubs to ensure that they support you much better so our role is to then make sure that the the hubs are doing the right thing for you the entrepreneur see so whenever then you go to a hub and they don't do the right thing for you you need to complain to us and then we will make sure that the hubs do the right thing well wow, that's beautiful you made mention of a point you, you, you just gave a point that uh, investors invest in the business not the idea right or, or, or i didn't get it right <laughs> yes investors invest in you not the business you the individual not the business right they invest in you the person not yeah the business. not the business that's yeah. that's beautiful <laughs> but is it i'm laughing because uh we, we we we've heard a lot of stories from young people who trying to come up with i mean uh, businesses of this nature and these are some of their fears so i'm so happy you kind of dissecting and getting us the nitty gritties of this whole thing and we are happy we are happy because uh we we getting all the knowledge that we need to get from what you share with us all right so how does the process work for someone to get to the hub so i i, I stay in um kwashima and i have this idea that i want to start some kind of business to solve a problem what are the processes one goes through before they get to the hubs network and then you kind of help them model it into a well-structured kind of business that they can run to become sustainable so right and again so we go through different stages we have the ideation stage which you just put the idea together if you have the idea on your head, you write it down on paper somewhere. Then you have a meeting with anybody from the hub. So again, if you're in Kwashiman, um, for example, there are hubs around yourself. And if there isn't, we definitely be able to find a hub that is closer to you one way or the other, right? So when you go to those hubs, they do this um, design thinking process with you where they help you break down the idea. And then from the idea breakdown, you pick, you solidify the idea. You move from there into creating the concept of the idea. Then from that concept of the idea, you will create a prototype of the idea. And then now that you move from the concept to a prototype, from the prototype, it's just to show people that, okay, this is what it can physically look like. This is what it can actually might feel like, right? And then from there, you move from a prototype into an MVP. So the MVP really means minimum viable product. So it is the functionable version of your idea. So now you notice that you've moved in four different spaces. You move from just an idea stage to a concept stage, to a prototype stage, and then to the MVP stage. Now that you're in wow. the MVP stage, most hubs will be able to then incubate your idea. What does the incubation mean? Now they can help you actually put teams together. They can actually help you get funding for your idea. They can then give you space. They can give you training. And from the incubation, you are then able to, um, you know, flesh out the idea even much more. So now you actually even built on your MVP for you to be able to launch. So you go to the market, you test the idea, you refine the idea, and eventually it becomes a full um, product. See, so you have to go through these phases. You have to go from the ideation stage, which involves design thinking. And then from that, you go into the concept. The concept then will move from it, that stage into prototyping. From prototyping, you move into MVP. From MVP, then you move into incubation. From incubation stage, that's when you launch your business, test the idea, and then eventually you'll be able to scale and then grow and become a great business person in that sense. So you have to go through those stages. And most of the hubs will put you through those stages. Wow. So the hub does that for us. So if you're joining us, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a wonderful time with... Ah, Josiah, it's it's wonderful. It's just flowing. It's just like we are the we are the base of a mountain, and there is a waterfall on top of us, and that is just flowing through uh, the, the ideas and the nuggets of wisdom are just flowing in. But you see, whilst we're enjoying it so much, our time is also getting up, and then uh, oh my, we need to wrap up, and then come in for the next part of it where we're going to have Josiah elaborate more on the set topic that we are discussing on. So we'll just do our final commercial break. And right after that is when you give us his final words. And we call it a day. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. 
Albert Kishon. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers for booking and interviews. Contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at AfsesNet Global, African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Influencing the next generation of Africans, that's what we stand for and that's what we do. And we always want to make sure you get to the best level that you can ever get to. That's why we're coming your way with all the season speakers to bring us enlightenment on what we're doing or what we're about to do. And today's episode has not been of a difference. Having here with us, Josiah Aysen has been a wonderful time sharing with us this wisdom nuggets. And I said, I tell you, it has been wonderful. The seat has been hot from beginning to now. And I know you also enjoying it. Thank you so much, Efua Chunebua Kodia, for joining us. Great advice. Thank you so much. And then uh, Ken Yeboa says, entrepreneur should be bold, but not to be rude. Hashtag Josiah. <laughs> All right. So, right. Josiah, uh, can you share with us some final words before we, we end this episode? And then definitely... We're going to do a part two of this. We're going to come again for another one. So what are your final words for us on this episode? Um, so I would say um, that entrepreneurship is about solving problems. And you solve problems by collaborating with people. So always find people that you can collaborate with, people that can help you firm up your ideas, people that can help you deliver value. And do not be afraid to fail. Failure is a good thing. As long as you learn from them and you develop from them, that's a good thing. And again, read, 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 and use all available resources. So please go on to www.ganahubsnetwork.com. Um, keep listening to um, you know influential podcasts like these to get all the information that you're looking for. So as an entrepreneur, go out there and change the world. Do not operate in fear. And just you know, be great. Add value and people will pay you for it. Add value and people will pay you for it. Do you have any upcoming programs or any upcoming events that you want people to know of so that they can participate or be part of it? Yeah. Um, so I would give my details, my um, det social media, and it's easy. Right. To then right. check because we at the moment have um, a program, a company, um, iSpace, we have a program that we run that is looking at training people how to commercialize their ideas, how to innovate to commercialize their ideas. See, so if they follow either myself or um, the handle that I put there, they will get the dates. And the training is actually starting from next week. We have our physical space in East Legon. See, so if you come to if you can come to the physical space, great. If you can't, you can also join our virtual classes that we run. But follow iSpace for all the events next week, and then you'll be able to join. Follow iSpace for all the event, and you'll be able to join from next week. Thank you so much for joining. And before we go, hey, here I, I think there's one more question for you before you run away. It says, "How do you know the future of your startup business? How do you know the future of your startup business?" That's the, that's a final question for you. <laughs> it just came from one of our, our I like that. You know. There. You will know the future of your startup business from what you do today and any other business that is similar to what it is that you're doing, right? Um, and also follow the trends. Be technologically aware, follow trends, and see what is happening in other markets. Because the fortunate thing for you is you are in a place where a lot of the things that you want to done or you want to do have already been done abroad, right? See, so... Right. By following the trends, you'll be able to identify what where your startup will be. See, so basically all it is is this research, research, and then talking to your customers as well is an important way to determine where your startup is going to be. 
talk to your talk customers. Into, talk to your customers. Know the ones that are going to benefit from your service and the product. Talk to them. Yes. They are those that are going to yes. purchase it. They are those that are going to push the brand. So talk to yourselves. Thank you so much. And hey, to our hashtag for today. What has been your hashtag for today from all the submissions that you've had? What do you think is the hashtag for today? So what we do is on every episode, we come up with a hashtag that carries out throughout the week. So what is your hashtag that you were able to glean from all that was shared on this episode? You can get to the chat area. Let me know it. Let's share it. Let's see. Let's compare notes. Maybe we have the same thing in common or you have something different that we will need to add to it. So let's know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> what is the hashtag for today? Are you ready for the hashtag for today? Are you ready for today's hashtag? <laughs> All right, here we go. Bring that ass back like a boom, 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 boom. The hashtag for today is be bold, not rude. As an entrepreneur, be bold and not rude. And we learned that from the points that were shared with us by Zaya Kwesi. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been a wonderful time. Definitely, we're coming to you again with a part two of this one where we're going to elaborate and get into deeper tentacles of the way that we're looking at entrepreneurship. It's been a wonderful time. And as I always say, dreams are in level. Make sure you get to the top level of your dreams. So we'll meet same time next week on the same platform. It is bye-bye for me, the ambassador. Benjamin Oswansa and the whole team from the Power Impact Series and African Season Speakers Network. See you same time next week for another great episode. Have a wonderful week.